Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So we are starting the session number three of this week. Uh, we are almost done with this week number three. Um, and we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday that was the uh, present perfect because we have some things that we need to um, understand about that uh, structure. We are going to see some uh, the views of the topic, then we are going to see some examples more about the use of uh, the present perfect and then we are going to have an exercise in which you are going to see some, um, it can be like a game, but in that case are the speaking cards in which you are going to um, like choose one of the categories that you will uh, find in the image that I will send to you later. Um, and you are going to see there are 10 categories in which you are going to choose the one that you like the most. Then you are going to um, ask some questions using the, per the present perfect to ask for a specific information for the other participants. So in that case, we are going to have like a uh, a speaking activity at the end of this session because we are going to put into practice all the information that we have about this um, question perfect. We are going to remember the structures that we have about the present perfect because we have a specific uh, structure for a positive, for a negative, and for a um, question that uh, we are going to um keep in mind because we are going to uh, write some uh, examples exercises and questions and you are going to need that information to ask those questions to your um partners in this course that is the last part that we are going to perform so now um we are going to remember uh, some of the information that we have about this um, this pen because we have a lot of information, but now we are not going to write all the information that we have. In this case, we are just going to um, take the most important points about this topic because we are going to end the uh, present perfect topic tonight. And tomorrow we are going to um, start with another topic that has to be with other um, tense that we are going to use in English. So in this case, we are going to uh, make a review of the, the information that we have because we have a lot of information about the present purpose. And also we were uh, learning um, that we have some specific points in which we are going to use this uh, tense. But now we are going to see what is the information that we have about this uh, topic. And we are going to make a review, then we are going to write some examples more to understand um, the structures that we have in a positive and negative and in interrogative sentences or questions. So this is the topic that we were talking about, that is the uh, present perfect. In this case, we have done uh, something that is really necessary to understand that the first thing for this kind of sense is that we use uh, this structure for uh, 
and a specified time before now. So in that case, it is not necessary to use time expression. Uh, if you find some information or you uh, search for more information about this um, sense, you will find that there is, um, we can say like, it's an exception, we can call it like that, in which we can use um, this kind of uh, expression that is talking about time. But remember that it says that um, in some of these examples, it is not like uh, talking the exact time in which the situation happened. In that case, it's talking about an unspecified um, expression. But we are going to see uh, more information about that part because it's kind of um, confusing when we are seeing the information. So we have some examples of the time expressions that we cannot use with this tense. And we have yesterday, one year ago, last week, when I was a child, and all of that um, phrases. Then we have the unspecified expressions of time, we can call it like that. But we have ever, never, once, many times, several times. In that case, we can use it because they don't give us that information about the specific time in which one of these actions takes place. Then we were talking about the um, five topics. We have five topics in which we are going to use this present perfect. The first one is the experience when we um, do some actions, go to some places, uh, practice some sports, in that case, we are talking about the experience of doing that action. And we can use it because we are not going to say the specific time in which we are practicing that um, action. Um, then uh, it said in that case that you can also use this sense to say that you have never had a certain experience. So in that case, we are talking about something that we did in the past or that we don't have the experience about that action. Then we have the topic number two that is change over time in which um, some situations happen in the past but change in the present. So in that case, we can also use the present perfect when we have some changes in the um, present time. Then we have topic number three, that is accomplishment, que son los logros que tienen las personas. And in this case, we are going to talk about the uh, or to make a list of accomplishments of individuals and humanity. Uh, the um, accomplishments that make an individual person or the whole humanity. In this case, also, we cannot mention a specific time. So we have a, a, some example, like man has worked on the moon, our son has learned how to read, doctors have cured many deadly diseases. So there are many accomplishments and they don't have a specific time. Then we have topic number four, that is an incomplete action you are expecting to happen. So in this case, um, we are expecting something about an action and that is um, incomplete. Maybe we are um, waiting for um, a class or an exam uh, that someone can finish the homework. And also uh, we can expect that someone give something to us. And in that case, we can use the present Perfect. And the topic number five, that is the last one, so we have multiple action at different times. In this case, we are talking about different actions 
that takes place in different times. So, in this case, uh, we use it to talk about several different actions which have occurred in the past at different times. And in, and in this case, it suggests the process is not complete. It's like expecting something, but in this case, there are many, many actions. And uh, more actions are possible to happen. So in that case, we can have like one action, but that uh, a specific action maybe can have more possible actions. So in that case, we are going to use the present perfect. Like in the first example, uh, that it says the army has attacked um, that city five times. So in that case, it's saying that the army um, has attacked from a specific city, but we are expecting that it can happen more attacks, or maybe they have a different kind of action in that moment. So in that case, we have five topics in which we are going to use the present perfect. Eh, recordemos que el presente perfecto eh, lo vamos a utilizar con un tiempo que no está en específico. O sea, vamos a hablar de acciones, pero no vamos a hablar de fecha. Esa es la parte importante. Vamos a hablar de, de cosas, de momentos, pero de, no de una fecha. Para eso tenemos el presente simple. Pero en este caso tenemos cinco temas en los cuales nosotros podemos desempeñar esta información, que es, ¿verdad?, la experiencia, los logros, eh, las acciones que no están completas y que esperamos que pasen, eh, muchas acciones en diferentes tiempos, pero que siempre tienen que ver con el pasado. También eh, estamos hablando de, eh, de cambios que se han dado en las acciones. So when we are talking about that five topics, we are going to use the present person. So then we have uh, some information about uh, this uh, topic. And it says that um, we have time expressions. I was uh, explaining that uh, at the end of the session, and it was kind of complicated to understand. So, it says that when we use the present perfect, it means that something has happened at some point in our life before now. Uh, remember, the exact time the action happened is not important. The important thing in this um, sense is the action, not the time, just the action. So in that case, sometimes we want to limit the time we are looking in for an experience. We need to make that experience and transform into a specific event at a specific time. But it, uh, sometimes it is not possible because we are not going to use the day. And we can do this um, with expressions of such as in the last week, in the last year, this week, this month, so far up to now. Because there are like uh, unspecified expressions in which, uh, and that expression we can use it with this um, uh, structure. Then we have that, and um, we were saying, and we were reading the example, last year and in the last year. El ejemplo que poníamos para lo de los um, time expressions era que si teníamos en la frase last year, like this, and the other one in the last year, the first one, it is not possible to use with the present um, perfect. No lo podemos utilizar el, el last year, porque estamos hablando de un año específico. In this case, we are in 2022, and if we were talking about last year, uh, it means 2021. Pero si tenemos in the last year, estamos hablando de 365 días, pero no especificamos en qué año exactamente. So in that case, we can use in the last year for this uh, structure, but not last 
Yeah. So, eh, it means, eh, we can say like this. Si utilizamos la primera de eh, last year, estamos hablando específicamente del año. Ponemos ahí el año, por ejemplo, 2021, 1999, eh, 2003, and all of the dates. But in this case, we are counting the days from one specific day to uh, today. En este caso, por ejemplo, nosotros podemos decir in the last year, en, la, en los últimos 365 días, a partir de cuándo, puede ser que estemos utilizando la misma fecha de hoy, 15 de junio. O puede ser del mes, de junio a junio. So in that case, it's um, an specified time because we are not saying the specific year or the specific uh, date because we are not using that specific information for this kind of expression. And we have another use that is duration from the past until now. And in this case, we are uh, using non-continuous verbs. And it says that with non-continuous verbs and non-continuous uses of mixed verbs, because we have a lot of actions and a lot of verbs that we can use in English, and it says we use the present perfect to show that something started in the past and has continued up until now. So in that case, it's um, a time uh, in that case is in the it's a different. In this case, we're adding more. Como le estamos agregando un poco más de información a, a la frase, en el año anterior, y no decimos en, específicamente de qué fecha a qué fecha, en cambio en el otro, como se lo decimos, el año pasado, last year es el año pasado, sabemos que nos referimos al año que acaba de pasar, o sea, el 2021. Pero en el, en el año que ha transcurrido, por ejemplo, y no sabemos específicamente de qué fecha nos estamos hablando. Pero en that case, en that, is the difference in that uh, in those expressions. So, and it says that, um, for example, for five minutes, for two weeks, and since Tuesday, are all duration which can be used with the present perfect. Um, in that case, it's talking about an action that uh, happened in the past, but continues in the present. And it says that we can use for five minutes. Estamos utilizando por cinco minutos, pero cuando no decimos que día. Así que en este caso sí podemos utilizar for five minutes. Then for two weeks. Um, it happens for two weeks. My birthday party happens for two weeks, for example. Pasó en dos semanas. Pero ¿cuáles semanas? I don't know. I'm not uh, telling uh, the month, I'm not telling the date, just two weeks. And since Tuesday, we are telling um, a name of a, a, a day, but we are not telling uh, the date. Also, the above use of present perfect is normally limited to non-continuous verbs and non-continuous use of mixed verbs. The word live, work, teach, and study are sometimes used in this way, even though they are not non-continuous verbs. Remember that the continuous part of the verb is when we are adding the ing to the verb. Then we have adverb placement. When we are using adverbs in this kind of structures, And it says that uh, we have some examples that show uh, the placement for grammar adverbs such as, and we have some examples of all this kind of adverbs. We have always, only, never, ever, here, 
stuff and etc. We know that we have a lot of options also that we can use for this kind of a structure. But in this case, we have those ones. So we have the example because in this case, uh, we are going to see the placement. So vamos a ver dónde se ubican los adverbios cuando estamos creando oraciones con el presente perfecto. So in this case, we have the example number one. And it says, you have only, you have only seen that movie one time. So in this case, we have only, this one is the, um, the other. Yes, it will be. We have a long list. Tenemos una lista muy larga de adverbios. Todos los adverbios que ustedes encuentren los pueden utilizar así, pero tienen que saber que se tiene que incluir entre el have y el verbo. In that place, you are going to use the adverb. In the middle of have, of have and uh, the verb. So in that case, that is the placement of the adverb. And we are in a question. Have, in this case, it's going to change a little bit. Have you only seen that movie one time? So in the case of the question, we are going to place the other between have and seen, but in this case, you are going to have the subject. Because in that case, it's always um, that the question word is uh, the beginning, then we have the subject. Because it, is, it needs to be like that to have some uh, sense. Vamos a poner siempre el eh, sujeto siempre, lo vamos a poner muy cerca de la palabra que nos da la pauta para crear la, la pregunta. Porque si no, no va a tener sentido. Si decimos, have only you seen, in that case it has no, no sense. Vamos a decir, have you only seen that movie one time. Pero siempre se va a poner en medio del have y del verbo, aunque en la pregunta lleve el sujeto inmediatamente después del have. So, that is the uh, information that we have about the present perfect. But we are going to write some examples in which we are going to see the structures. We are going to have positive, negative, and question. In this case, it is just examples to um, see all the information that we have about this uh, specific structure uh, are into action, for example. Vamos a crear solo unos cuantos ejemplos para que veamos cómo vamos a ir eh, trabajando lo de los verbos con el have o el has. So, we are going to see. Uh, but let me search for the structure. Because we have the structure in some places. Let me see, let me see. I think I, hmm. I think we don't have the structure. So we are going to write the structure for um, this sense. So let me see. We have the structure. So, in this case, we are going to have um, the subject first. Then we are going to write have 
then we are going to write the um, the verb, and we were saying that in that case we are going to use a specific. Um, I think I'm having some trouble with the internet, but I don't know if you are listening well because it says that I am having trouble with my internet connection. So in that case, I think in this one, see, in this one we have the structure. I remember that I, I told you about this one. Yes, we have the structure. So in this case, we have the subject, the have or has, the past participle, the complement, and for question, we have at the, uh, the beginning, have or has, then we have the subject, the past participle, the complement, and the question mark. And for the negative one, we have the subject, have or has, not uh, plus a participle, the, the past participle, and the complement. So we have here the structures, and I'm going to have it like this because we are going to write some examples. I have here. So in that case, we are going to write simple sentences for the affirmative one. For example, um, I'm going to use all the subjects that we have, that are the pronouns. I have I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. And we have here. Then we are going to write have. I have, you have. In this case, we are going to change for have. Have, have, and have. And then we need the past participle of the verb. In this case, we are going to use a study, but we are going to use the past participle, that is study. Uh, And we are going to add a complement. And in this case, English. So we have the sentence for the affirmative form. Uh, they are very uh, simple. In that case, we are not going to write long sentences, uh, but we are going to see. For example, if we are going to change the verb, we are going to have, um, or we are going to search for our verb list, because in that case, we are going to have a lot of uh, verbs that we can use to create sentences. Um, remember that we have a lot of um, verbs in which we are going to uh, work, but let me uh, do some uh, examples with the other verbs that we have in the list. For example, We are going to use to um, have broken my my glass, for example. You have broken my glass. Then they have. 
blown the candle. And we have, um, let's see. You have come to my house. It has caused ten dollars. You have done your homework. So we have here the structure. For the other uh, sentence that we are creating. But remember that we are going to use have or has and the past participle that is the number six. Así que siempre para este tipo de eh, estructura, para el presente perfecto, vamos a utilizar el have o el has con la tercera columna de las listas. Um, de verbos que nosotros tenemos que es el pasado eh, participio, ¿verdad? So, in that case, we have there some affirmative sentence. In the case that we are going to use the negative one, we are just going to add not to the um, sentence. So, we have negative. And we are going to use some of these examples, not all of them. And we have, I have, then, when I am going to write the not, I'm going to write it uh, next to the have. I have not studied English. Then she has not studied English. And they have not studied English. And for the other uh, verse that we have in, in the second part of the example, you have not broken my glass. They have not blown the candle. And we're just adding not to the sentences. And it's quite simple. And for the question that are the, the last that we are going to write, We have this one. Mm, have you studied English? We're just changing the order of the words. Have they blown the candles? And the last one, have you broken my glass? So it's the same with the, with, um, with the other questions that we uh, make with the other senses or with the other structures. Remember that you have to change uh, the order of the words to create this kind of question. Um, the only kind of question that we are not going to change the order of the words is when we are using um, WH words because we are going to create another uh, kind of question. But in this case, you have to move the have at the beginning of the phrase to create that question. So in that case, we are going to end the part of the information that we have about this topic. Now, I'm going to send to you 
an image to the group. So let me see. And I was saying that you will find the speaking card. So in that case, you're going to find 10 uh, categories in which you are going to um, create questions. And you have some examples in the image. So I will give you time to see the categories to create your own questions using the information that we have in the document. And then we are going to see those questions. So I will send this image and you will have time to see the categories, read the examples, create two questions for each, uh, let's see, for each category. And then we are going to do a practice. Vamos a leer las preguntas que aparecen en las tarjetas o en las speaking cards. Vamos a crear preguntas utilizando la estructura del presente perfecto. Y eh, luego vamos a hacer una práctica oral. Así que eh, la imagen ya está en el grupo para que ustedes lean la información, las categorías y las preguntas. Creen sus eh, propias preguntas y vamos a hacer la práctica. So you will have some time right now to create your question.
While you are reading, I am creating your questions. I will write the categories in the document. And also I will write some examples um, to help you to create that question that we are going to use in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to write the categories and the examples and some more examples that you can use. But now you are going to create your own questions that we are going to use for the speaking activity. Okay, we have some questions in the chat, and that's okay. Have you ever played a sport? Let's do it. Thank you.
Okay, I will write the um, question that we are seeing in this class. In the category, see.
I have a lot of messages, so I'm trying to read the questions and then I'm trying to write all the questions going a little bit um, changes in the structure because remember that you are using the um, the past participle part of the verb and also uh, we are not adding a specific time for this kind of sentences. I have this question that is talking about paranormal experience. I don't know if I can put it into problems or free time. Um, I think um, I will do it for free time. Oh, this page just the normal screen. Mm, let me see, let me see. Have you always?
So we're not going to have all the questions that you are writing because there are a lot of questions that you are writing on the chat. So I'm going to write, I'm going to search for the categories that I don't have any questions. For example, I have, let me see. I have reports for problems, animals, food, mm, but I don't have for health. I have just one question for traveling, two questions for clothes, I don't have anything for holidays, one for free time, and one for school. So I'm going to search for that kind of question. So let me see, I have here one for holidays. Have you ever worked for, on Christmas? Christmas, have you ever visited London? That is for traveling. Then I have, have you ever celebrate Mom's Day? In that case, Mom's Day. On the day this month. Mom's Day. What is the next, mm, ah, what is the best movie you have seen? In the case, you need to Hmm, let's see. I write like this. What is the best movie you have seen in Netflix? Have you had a day off during the last vacation? Great time. Have you ever gone dancing in your first time? And all of that. Okay, thank you very much for your participation, writing in the question. We have a lot of questions, but in some cases, or in some categories, we don't have a lot of questions. But we have here the categories, and you can find all the questions that you were uh, sharing with us on the document. So it's time to end the session. So we are going to see each other tomorrow for the last session of this week. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Hi everyone. Good night. Thank, Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.